on World News Tonight. No trust motion. Indian opposition leaders move no confidence vote against Prime Minister Modi's government as violence escalates in money. Greece fires. Wildfire tragedy permeates Greece as first fatalities on the account of the raging fires are reported. Service extended. Russia extends maximum age for military conscription in efforts to expand the pool of military reserves in the war against Ukraine. Larger than life. Fluffy bunny rabbits to feature in an outdoor sculpture show titled Huntopia in the US Botanical Garden. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and you are watching World News. We begin in India as Prime Minister Narendra Modi's predictions five years ago on a possible no-confidence motion against his administration has now become a reality. As the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Brilla has accepted a proposition by the Indian Opposition Alliance for a no-trust motion against the Modi government. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government is set to face a no-confidence vote in Parliament amid a deadlock with the opposition over violence in the state of Manipur. Opposition leaders have said this is to force Mr Modi to speak on Manipur. They have been demanding that he address Parliament on the ethnic clashes in the state. At least 130 people have been killed and tens of thousands displaced in Manipur after violence broke out between the majority of Mete group and the tribal Kuki minority. Moreover, a video that showed two women being paraded naked by a mob further fueled global outrage and condemnation. It also made Mr. Modi break his silence on the issue, stating that this incident had shamed India and that the attackers wouldn't be spared. Upon accepting the notice for the move, Speaker Om Birla said he would announce a date for the debate after speaking with leaders of all parties. Mr. Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party will not be worried about losing the vote. The party and its allies have a clear majority in the 543-member Lok Sabha. But the Prime Minister will be required to speak to defend his government, which is the opposition's aim. Wildfires continue to consume terrains in Greece and now the first known fatalities are reported on the account of wildfires that have been raging the Greek islands for a week. And Prime Minister Kyriakos Meltakis warned of tough days ahead as the blazes destroy homes and force tourist evacuations. This is the horrifying moment two pilots battling wildfires in Greece lost control of their plane. He showed the fireball that erupted after the aircraft hit the ground on the island of Evia, killing them both. Drone footage showed the aftermath of the wreckage. The pair became some of the first known fatalities of blazes that have been raging on the Greek islands for a week. Separately reported that the body of a 41-year-old stock breeder was found burned in a shack in a hard-to-reach area, also on Evia. Turkish and Slovakian forces have helped hundreds of Greek firefighters battle blazes that have raged on the islands of Rhodes, Corfu and Evia since Wednesday. Hot windy conditions have seen a resurgence in the fires and warnings that they could yet get worse. Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis. The next few days will be especially difficult. After that, I hope conditions will help us more. But this is why we remain on high alert. Obviously, in the face of what the entire planet is facing, especially the Mediterranean, which is a climate change hotspot. There is no magical defense mechanism. On the island of Corfu, residents were seen packing vehicles to flee their homes. <laughs> this mayor of the village of Perithia said locals had managed to put out some fires, but winds had made them worse. Places were being made available in the north of the island for evacuees to stay, he added. Corfu is a popular holiday destination and depends economically on tourism. It has so far been less affected by wildfire than Rhodes, however. Lefteris Laudikos and his family own a small hotel in Rhodes, one of the epicenters of the fire over the weekend. He told their 200 guests, mainly from Germany, Britain and Poland, evacuated in rental cars while his family fought to save their livelihood. We did everything alone. So as you can see from here, This is how we stop the fire. The fire came here, turned on very quickly. And my, my father with my cousin, uh, and uh, f first it, uh, they, they were alone, uh, hide in the hotel and wait uh, for the fire. About 20,000 people had to leave homes and hotels in Rhodes over the weekend as the inferno spread. 
A prosecutor had launched an investigation into the causes of the fires and the preparedness and response of authorities, ERT reported. It said about 10% of the island's land area had burned. Now, over in China, Foreign Minister Ken Gang was dramatically ousted after a prolonged absence from public view and replaced by his predecessor in a surprisingly and highly unusual shake-up of the country's falling policy leadership. The sudden move, approved by the top decision-making body of China's rubber stamp parliament, comes as a mystery has swirled around the faith of Quinn, who was last seen in public in the month of June. China on Tuesday named veteran diplomat Wang Yi as its new foreign minister, replacing Qin Gang after a mysterious one-month absence from duties. Wang is in fact not new to the job. He held the post from 2013 to 2022, witnessing U.S.-China ties falling to an all-time low. Days before the shakeup, Wang substituted Qin to attend the ASEAN summit, after the ministry claimed Qin would skip the meeting due to health concerns. The whereabouts of Qin, who only assumed the role in December, remain a mystery. His high-profile meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in June was one of his last public appearances. He met with other visiting diplomats on June 25 and then disappeared from the public eye. Qin was once considered a rising star and leader Xi Jinping's protégé. He has overseen many of Xi's contacts with foreign leaders and was posted to Washington as ambassador in 2021, following the tit-for-tat spat between the two superpowers. Chinese state media did not say why Qin was removed, but reported that Xi signed a presidential order to make the decision effective. The foreign ministry did not respond to request for comment. Qin's disappearance is not the first unexplained absence of a Chinese official. Industry Minister Xiao Yaqing vanished from public view for nearly a month last year before it was revealed he was being investigated for corruption. So what will it mean for the US-China relations with Wang Yi back at the helm? Some analysts believed a familiar face to Washington does not help improve ties and the sudden removal of an official showed the unpredictability and opacity of the Chinese system. While some described Wang as a diplomat with sway who brings more credibility and stability. Moving on to conflict-ridden Ecuador, as prison riots and the assassination of a mayor led Ecuador's embattled president to declare a 60-day state of emergency in three coastal provinces rocked by a surge in gang-related violence. President Guillermo Lasso announced likely curfews in the provinces of Manabi, Los Rios and the city of Duran, about 170 miles southwest of the capital, Quito. Tonight, a state of emergency in Ecuador. The nation's president putting three provinces, including the coastal city of Manta, under curfew. This move after the city's recently re-elected mayor, Agustin Intriago, was shot and killed. This video capturing the aftermath of the brazing attack as the mayor was gunned down along with amateur soccer player Ariana Morales. Mi amor. At his service, wearing a bulletproof vest, his wife giving this emotional goodbye. Hoy dejaron a dos niños en el calor de su papá. Hoy nos arrebataron todo. Hoy le arrebataron el sueño una familia a toda una ciudad. The shocking murder comes as the country battles an ongoing wave of violence that authorities attribute to dispute among organized crime groups. The prisons have become a battleground. This week, the nation's Bureau of Prisons reported over 100 guards were held hostage at different detention centers throughout the country. No vamos a permitir por ningún motivo que los grupos delincuenciales organizados generen inseguridad, violencia y preocupación desde las cárceles. Making matters worse, a clash at the Litoral prison in Guayaquil Saturday that left over 30 dead and more than 14 injured. 
government mobilizing soldiers to enter the country's prisons and regain control, freeing the guards. Nosotros hicimos una planificación combinada con Fuerzas Armadas. Tenemos más de 2.700 hombres interviniendo este momento de grupos tácticos. This massive escalation, all just one month ahead of national elections. Iraq and some other Muslim-majority countries have strongly condemned the burning of a Quran by a group called Danish Patriots outside the Iraqi embassy in Copenhagen. Shortly after the incident, Iraq's foreign ministry called on the authorities of the country in European Union to quickly reconsider the so-called freedom of expression and the right to demonstrate. Hundreds of Iraqis take to the streets in Baghdad in a rally condemning the repeated desecration of a Quran in front of its embassy in Denmark, as well as similar events in Sweden. We demand the Danish and Swedish governments to refrain from these actions. It is a great sedition for all humanity, not only just for Islam. The incidents triggered mass demonstrations across Muslim countries, including here in Yemen, where thousands march in solidarity calling for Muslim-majority nations to follow Iraq's example of cutting diplomatic ties after it expelled its Swedish envoy. The Yemeni people are taking to the streets to emphasize the sacredness of Islamic symbols, most importantly the Holy Quran. This rally today is calling for an economic boycott and calling upon all regimes and people from Islamic countries to follow Iraq, which called for a complete diplomatic boycott. Monday's burning was organized by the ultra-nationalist group, the Danish Patriots, and follows similar events on Friday, where another small group desecrated the Islamic holy book outside Baghdad's Copenhagen embassy, sparking attempts to storm the building in the Iraqi capital's heavily fortified green zone. Crowds also set Iraq's Swedish embassy alight last week, in protest of multiple events where the Quran was burnt and stamped on. Both Sweden and Denmark have condemned the burning itself, but argue it's permissible as acts of free speech. We'll be back with more world news of this short commercial break. Welcome back. More violence to be expected as Russia's lower house of parliament approved legislation that likely to press the upper age limit for mandatory military service and ban drafters from leaving the country as Moscow seeks to expand its pool of military reserves amid staggering losses in President Vladimir Putin's stalled war in Ukraine. The following visuals of this story is graphic. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. Russian lawmakers on Tuesday voted to expand the age for military conscription as the war in Ukraine marked its 17th month. Previously, men between the ages of 18 and 27 had been required to perform a year of military service or equivalent training as of January 1st. That will apply to Russians up to the age of 30. The move is the latest by Moscow to widen its pool of eligible recruits since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Moscow does not release casualty figures, but a leaked U.S. intelligence document from February this year estimated Russia had suffered as many as 43,000 killed and 180,000 wounded. The law passed on Tuesday also bans men from leaving Russia from the day they are summoned to a conscription office. That might be a result of lessons learned last year, when the Kremlin announced what it called a limited mobilization to call up some 300,000 men. That call-up prompted hundreds of thousands to flee the country. Now, the isolated North Korea is poised to host its first foreign delegation in years since the coronavirus outbreak. Not just a Chinese delegation, but also a Russian one has been invited for the regime's so-called victory day, as Pyongyang seemingly bolsters ties with Beijing and Moscow on this occasion. After three years and six months, North Korea is set to receive its first foreign delegation. It has invited Chinese and Russian delegations to mark the 70th anniversary of the armistice of the Korean War on Thursday, known as Victory Day by the regime. According to the North Korean Central News Agency on Monday, the invited Chinese delegation is led by Lee Hongzong, a member of the political bureau of the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party. The invitation extended to Russia's Minister of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, was announced the following day. 
this visit will mark the very first official visit by foreign guests in a shift in policy. Since the COVID-19 outbreak in 2020, North Korea has closed its borders, only partially resuming cargo transportation with China last year. The only known case of a foreign guest visiting the regime was back in March, when China's new ambassador to North Korea, Wang Yajun, took up the post. North Korea has also been taking part in international events, with ambassador-level representatives already overseas. This includes the ASEAN Regional Forum for the past three years, with this year's forum also attended by its ambassador to Indonesia, An Kwang Il, instead of its foreign minister, Che Sonny. The invited Chinese delegations took part in a memorial ceremony for those who fought in the war on Tuesday, according to a Chinese newspaper. The delegations visiting the country this Thursday are expected to attend the celebratory military parade and meet with its leader, Kim Jong-un. Observers largely see the North's first post-pandemic foreign guest coming from China and Russia as a parent show of their ties against South Korea, the US and Japan. But eyes are on whether North Korea could resume other exchanges with China, perhaps in flights and trains, or keep it at high-level diplomacy for the time being. The drug race to slimming down heightens as Danish drug maker Novo Nordisk will launch weight loss drug Vyogvi in Germany at the end of July, with doctors saying hundreds of patients are prepared to pay for prescriptions. Novo Nordisk's weight loss drug Vyogvi will be available in Germany from the end of July and people seem willing to pay. Several doctors told they have received interest from hundreds of patients and expect high demand for the prescriptions even though health insurance plans, which cover around 90% of Germans, won't foot the bill. The weekly injection will have an initial cost of around $190 a month, but it will cost around $330 in the long term. Used alongside a structured diet and exercise regime, Wigovi has been shown to help obese people lose about 15% of their body weight, and doctors say they will primarily consider it for patients who are at the early stages of obesity with a BMI of around 30 or slightly higher. But clinical trial data shows people regain weight after they stop taking it. Other drugs are already available in Germany. Irina Ernstberger took the diabetes drug Ozempic, also made by Novo, to help her lose weight. Three months after finishing her course, she's managed to keep the weight off, alongside maintaining a healthy diet. For me, at least, I didn't really change my eating habits, and I think that was the main issue. And now, with the last phase, with the support of my doctor, Professor Horbach, I have finally succeeded. Wigovi's launch in Germany adds a third European market. Novo's shares have rallied nearly 120% since Wigovi debuted in June 2021. That makes it Europe's second most valuable listed company, after luxury brand LVMH. The Danish drug maker is also ramping up production to meet soaring demand in the US, where the drug sells for as much as $1,350 a month. The tech wars continue. TikTok has announced the introduction of text-only posts as it becomes the latest tech company seeking to capitalize on people who may be looking for an alternative to Twitter. The video sharing platform will allow posts of up to 1,000 words in a move it characterized as expanding the boundaries of content creation. TikTok is taking aim at X, the company formerly known as Twitter. The Chinese video sharing app announced this week that it will allow users to create text-only posts similar to posts on X. By doing so, TikTok becomes the second major social media firm to smell blood in the water at X, rebranded just this week by owner Elon Musk after months of chaos and plummeting ad sales at the company. Earlier this month, Meta Platform CEO Mark Zuckerberg launched Threads also a text-only application. TikTok's posts, which look similar to Instagram stories, have a 1,000-character limit, according to tech news website The Verge. They can also feature hashtags and allow people to tag other users. And TikTok's product expansion doesn't appear to stop there. The Wall Street Journal on Tuesday reported that TikTok also plans to launch an e-commerce site to sell Chinese-made goods in the U.S. 
TikTok's moves come as the company faces heightened scrutiny by American officials and a potential ban in the U.S. over concerns that its data collection poses a national security risk. Welcome back. For more news, let's take it around the world in a minute. The Olympic torch for the Paris 2024 Games was shown for the first time in Paris during an event with officials and athletes. Bacteria bloom has turned the waters in Romanian lake into flamingo pink. Experts stated that the color was normal and was produced by a bacteria that thrives under certain conditions in warm and salty water. French First Lady Brigitte Macron bid farewell to her godson, Yuan Meng. The first giant panda born in France in 2017 at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris on Tuesday afternoon. More than 50 pilot whales have died after stranding on a remote beach in Australia's west, authorities said on Wednesday, while rescue teams tried to return the rest of the pod back to the waters. The Philippine Coast Guard started rescue and cleanup operations after Super Typhoon Doxory lashed the country's northern coastline with Gulf force winds and torrential rain, bursting banks of rivers and leaving thousands without electricity. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We end in artist Hans Solom's new New York City studio as two giant shimmering glass bunnies stand tall amidst his other works of art. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.